Okay, so um, this is obviously my presentation on <coughs> uh, the Western tradition, Gothic revival, and my chosen designer, uh, Augustus Poudin. There's a fellow there. Um, Poudin was an English architect and uh, prolific designer, born in the early 19th century during Britain's Industrial Revolution. Perhaps his most famous, at least most recognisable works, is the Palace of Westminster. Uh, lovely interior shop which he had a lot to do with. Um, this job came about after the Great Fire of London in 1834. Uh, Pugin and renowned architect Charles Barry won the contract to design the new Palace of Westminster. But why Pugin? Pugin championed the Gothic revival as a style of architecture. This was one of the defining factors for using his design services on the new Palace of Westminster. Britain was also beginning to be gripped by this revival of the medieval Gothic style, from a society increasingly more interested and appreciative of their history in these romantically designed buildings, which were a stark contrast from the Georgian conservative-styled architecture or the, neo or the neoclassical of that time. Um, and this picture here is out of a book that Putin wrote and did the drawings for, and it shows the sort of contemporary Georgian archway on the left hand side uh, with what he feels in this book titled Contrast a much better archway if you like which was in the sort of gothic revival style so it's going back to medieval times to, to sort of bring out that ornate sort of uh, those works and, and a better class of architecture he felt and what about me just the, the shapes of the arches are significant there aren't they? Uh, yeah I was going yeah, to talk okay. about that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah uh, but what is Gothic style? Um, Gothic style ranges from country to country. It depends on different periods in time, but it's most commonly known for its pointed architecture. So hence the sort of, obviously, the points, the archways, the points to the archways. Um, <coughs> and I got an interesting quote from the Victorian Albert, Albert Museum that says, architectural elements such as pointed arches, steep sloping roofs, and decorative tracery on its Gothic revival style guide I think I've got uh, another example of St. John's Cathedral, the interior which Pigeon designed, and a chair with these sort of fancy motifs. Um, it's all sort of really gothic in its style. Oh, and the, the, the archways, etc. Um, <coughs> so, the distinctive style of medieval design was used by Pigeon extensively. Uh, gothic design was also open to individual interpretation allowing designers and architects greater freedom to express creative ideas. And coupled with ever-increasing manufacturing developments and mechanisation in industry, it's allowed Pugin, along with a select few of his craftsmen, for example Minton, uh, the architectural ceramicist, uh, the ability to speedily design and create a surprisingly large output of work in only 15 years. Um, this is an example of Pugin's work. There's some tables, all in the Gothic style of Candelab, and Labra. And Labra. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, tile that he designed. Uh, the, the background wallpaper, perhaps, is also uh, the, the running theme throughout the uh, slides, is also designed by Pugin. Um, but why did Pugin champion this Gothic revival style? Um, there are a few reasons. Firstly, during his young years, he was besotted by this romantic medieval age. His father, Augusta Pugin, um, a good illustrator of buildings, would school teenage boys and his son Augustus in, a, in illustration, perspective and shading. These are some examples. That was actually um, off the British Museum website. Um, inscribed my first design. I think he did that for around nine years old. I think he got it wrong. Uh, nine, really good for nine a nine-year-old drawing. Uh, these, um, there was a documentary, Time Team, did a special on Pugin called The, the God of Gothic. Um, and these are just some stills that I'd captured whilst watching the video. And apparently, uh, is it Tony Robinson? Baldry? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He said <laughs> uh, that he did these about the age of 12, uh, at least these ones anyway, um, when went off on holiday drawing illustrations of, around Europe and, and parts of Britain. Baldry's a good person to be doing that programme, thinking of <laughs> Blackadder. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, sorry, I've lost where I am now. Uh, yes, did it. Uh, they would they would tour much of Britain and Europe, exploring many of the buildings and churches, uh, creating drawings by looking, inspecting, measuring, and digging for accuracy to really understand the architecture. 
Uh, this gave per, uh, Puget first-hand experience of these gracious medieval buildings and also in honing his design skills in that style. Um, other influences included the German painter and engraver Albrecht Dürer, particularly this medieval uh, engraving, copper engraving, uh, titled Night, Death and the Devil. Um, and Walter Scott, the historic and romantic novelist, also influenced Puget and his desire to engross himself in this medieval period. Uh, this obsession with the Gothic style worked well for Puget in this Victorian period. Economically, Britain was thriving because of the Industrial Revolution. Factories and industrial bu buildings were popping up all over Britain, particularly in the northern cities. But this brought about civic and social problems. Fuji, being a recent convert to Catholicism, saw these problems, the ugly buildings, the smogs from the industrial chimneys, the slums people were living in, and the mechanisation of Britain, and felt that the, the medieval ideals, a uh, strong religious order, uh, that was also gaining momentum after the Reform Act and the Catholic Revival, uh, was what was needed. With Fuji's gift of design, prolific and meticulous work ethic, his passion for Gothicism, his religious beliefs, uh, forward thinking and distaste for where Britain was heading, combined in his many publications, for instance, contrast of the, the shot that I saw before, should I go back to that one? Um, almost served as a manifesto to solve Britain's looming civic and social issues. His views were met with enthusiasm. He was literally the right man at the right time. Putin's intention was to solve these problems through civic and religi religious buildings. Um, which he felt was the purest form of godly architecture, uh, in, as in the Gothic and Revival style. So he was literally looking to the past to solve the problems of the future. Um, Fujin's most significant piece of work for me was not Alton Towers, just bear with me, I've got to go back now. Uh, what? There we go. Cool. Uh, it was not Alton Towers, which he redesigned for the Order of Shrewsbury. Um, obviously, not the ride part of Alton Towers, just the. <laughs> <laughs> the Gothic style. Um, all the six cathedrals he designed, for example, St. Barnabas's Cathedral in Nottingham. Is it Sadie? You said you yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm familiar with it. Um, all the 40 churches, which is just incredible, right, in 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, for example, St. Mary's is in Derby, just near the, um, uh, the Ring Road. Uh, all many private residences. The most significant for me was the Grange at Ramsgate, next to that one, recently restored. Um, this was Putin's family home, which he designed not only the buildings, but the furniture, the wallpaper, the floor tiles, even the door hinges. And we've got some pictures of the fetching wallpaper. Um, the Grange was the second home that Putin had designed for himself. Like all of his designs, he looked to the past for its Gothic style, but also radical and forward thinking in its <coughs> layout and design. Hence this motto on the wallpaper, which is on a bond, which translated in French, I think, means forward. So it's, you know, progressive. Um, there's a picture of the floor plan in there. Unlike other Georgian design domestic dwellings of the era, of which were designed in a subdued, symmetrical, conformative style, focusing on the building's exterior, the Grange tackled domestic house design from the inside out. Um, the occupants were the focus. Rooms were designed with more thought. Windows were put where Putin wanted light or to enjoy the views, and not where they looked right from the outside. Chimney stacks were moved to the exterior, hallways with gallery staircases were used, and connecting corridors between the rooms. Um, pitched roofs, and the Grange was built with brick, not stone, because the Georgians build a lot of houses, I think, with stone, I suppose, brick. Which uh, brick was seen as more sort of what you'd build a factory or an industrial sort of building out of, as opposed to particularly a house, I think. Um, Pugin's house served as a blueprint and revolutionised the way Britain designed homes for at least the next century. And evidently, much of these Pugin influences can be seen in suburban houses today. That was a picture of uh, Darwin Library, which he didn't design, but I thought was relevant because it was quite gothic in its nature. It was, it was done after uh, Pugin. But Pugin is often referred to as, a, as God's architect. Um, 2012 was Pugin's bicentenary of his birth, um, and he'd been, it's been extensively documented in many articles and also in programmes such as Time Team, which I mentioned. Uh, Sons of Grace did a, 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 a program on him, a BBC4 documentary. Uh, Jonathan Glancy, an architectural critic for The Guardian on Putin's house, The Grange, says, its structural and 